Contestant number eight, Toastmaster Surendra Chari. Title of the speech is The Rooster. The Rooster, Toastmaster Surendra Chari. Mr. Contest Chairman, fellow Toastmasters and guests, a very good evening to all of you. Good evening. Until a couple of years ago, in Jubail, we used to get fresh live chicken in the shops. There were stacks of cages in the shop and the seller used to take out chicken, kill it, de-skin and cut according to the requirements of the customer. One day while I was waiting for my chicken to get ready, I noticed that the seller had forgotten to close the door of one of the cages. And I was astonished to see that none of the chickens in that cage even attempted to come out. <laughs> they had seen their colleagues being taken away and cut to death and still thought of escaping was not coming into their mind. <laughs> These chickens are grown in factory. From the time they hatch until they are cut, they live in a box. Their flesh grows to one, one, one and a half kilo, but their mind does not grow at all to the extent that they don't, it doesn't even sense the oncoming death. <coughs> the domestic chicken, on the other hand, are completely different. In our house in village, we have a box where chickens are sheltered. Somebody from the house comes every day morning, opens the door and releases the chicken into the surroundings. The chickens go around, eat what they want, they play among themselves, they play with the cattle and the dogs and the cats and even sometimes with the children. And when the sun sets, they come back to the same box. And someone from the house comes again, closes the door. This these chickens spend their day into this exciting world and at the, in the night they stay protected. I remember when I was a teenager, one of my uncles wanted to sacrifice a rooster for a ritual. But he was vegetarian, so he did not have the chickens at home. So he purchased a healthy young rooster from market. The rooster came with his legs tied with ropes and he was so energetic that he, he flapped his wings to escape. The ritual, ritual was to take place on the bank of the river. And those were rainy days, the river was full of water, the, it, it, the width was about 70-80 meters. In the evening, the ritual took place and to my surprise, my uncle untied the legs of the rooster and set him free. I, to, I asked him, uncle, you have paid money for that rooster, how come you are setting him free? He said, I am a vegetarian, I don't want to eat. If you want, you go and catch that rooster and have a feast. <laughs> so I told my accompanying colleagues, let's go and catch the rooster. So we, were, we ran behind the rooster. The rooster was running ahead of us. The two parties were running, but the intentions were different. <laughs> we were running for the feast, but that poor rooster had just come out of death threat and he didn't want to get into the next one. <laughs> so we ran behind him, he went to the bush. We shook the bush, he jumped into another bush. And this continued for a few minutes until four of us were started sweating even on that chilly evening. He said, I said, let's have a break for a few minutes and relax and then we'll try again. In the meantime, the rooster went and stood next to the water. So I noticed, I said, let's go. Now we have much better chance to catch that rooster. <laughs> but because on the other side there is water, so we said, we'll encircle him from this side. So we approached the rooster. I approached and I, I extended my arm to catch that rooster. And the rooster jumped into air. He stretched his wings as high, as far as he could and pushed the air underneath the wings. Brought all the energy of his life, or of his body into the wings and all his determination and willpower into his mind and pushed. And again, and again, he was airborne onto the waters and landed on the other side of the, of the river. <laughs> you know, in a, in a few seconds, he turned around, looked at us, and yelled, hoo, 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 
As if he was telling, you are the smartest creature in the world, but I have won this battle of life and death. You are four in number, much stronger than me, but I have won. I have won. Hello, those masters and guests. The rooster's body was strong, definitely. But his mind and his determination was much, much stronger. He had decided that, come what may, I am going to fly across this river and win this battle of life and death. In our life, we, have, we may have money power and muscle power, but only when it is synchronized and synergized with mind power, we achieve extraordinary success in our life. There are plenty of examples in the world where people without any significant qualifications have done far better than the scholars and the gold medalists. It is the strength of their mind and thoughts that gives them extraordinary flying advantage like that of the rooster. And then we get to hear Yes, I have won. I have won. I have won. Mr. Conchichan.